So now to prepare for figuring out the 12 three note closed voice triads, we're starting with these three inversions on the first three strings. This one with the root G in the bass, this one with the third B in the bass, and this one with the fifth D in the bass. And for each one of these, we're going to put the top note down an octave. This is three, five, one, now this is three, five, one with the one down an octave. And then successively we'll make the same kind of inversion. This is now one, three, five, and now it's going to be one, three, with five down here. One, three, five. To make these inversions, you'll need to know these octave shapes. This is an E form octave, the top two notes in an E chord, the top two E notes in an E chord, E here and E here, four string second fret and first string open, the lower one being six string open E. Um, these top two notes make an E form octave. All three of them would be these three. I have mo now moved the E notes of the E chord, these three E notes, each up one fret. Now they're Fs, but they're in the E form. Here they're Gs, but they're in the E form. And the top two notes, top two octave notes, are in the E form. And as we invert these chords, you'll need that as one of the three octave shapes. So in this one, this top note, I'll move down an octave. I get this. Next I'll need a C form octave. In the C chord, the C notes are here, fifth string and second string, and that makes a C form octave. On whichever note you play them, they're the C form, but they have a different name. Now they're E notes, but they're in the C form. So back to this G chord. This first inversion, I used the E form octave and brought this G down to here for that chord. And with the next inversion, I'm taking this note and moving it down the C form octave to here. And then I get this. Now as you're going through all of these inversions, you'll need to be able to visualize some notes. Here I'm playing third, fifth root, or B, D, G. With the next inversion, I'll put this note down an octave, so I'll need to visualize that note here and visualize these two unchanged notes and then be able to take my hand off and still see these and visualize this one down an octave here. So then I see these with this one and I grab that. Then successively the same sort of thing. I'll see these three notes and move this one down an octave to there, but be able to still visualize where these two are. So I need these two with that moved an octave to there. So I have this. There are the unchanged ones and this one down an octave to here. Then for this last one, I'll need the G form octave. In the G chord, the G notes, open position G chord, the G notes are G on the sixth string, here at the third fret, same fret on the first string, and the third string open. These two lower notes, two lower Gs, sixth string and third string, form the bottom part of the G form octave. Now I'm playing A notes, but they're in the G form, in the same shape as these G notes. Of course, here on the third string, I'm illustrating the open string. So this is the G form octave, the two lower notes. Now back to the triads, the G triad inverting. Here, this is shaped like an open position E chord. And this top note needs to go down an octave to there. 
and that's the G4 mark that I was referring to. So I have to again visualize these two unchanged notes with this one down an octave here and grab those. And as you're going through these, it's best to start with at least the uh, fingering that you think you could get to this chord with the fastest. So here I would finger this like this, not like this or something, but by barring the fifth and fourth strings and fretting the sixth string with my third finger. Now the next one will involve those same three octave shapes. Now visualize these two notes unchanged and the top note goes down an octave to here. Or finger it this way. And that note going down an octave was again in the E form. Like these two upper E's in the E chord. So G chord, top note goes down an octave. Then now this is the top note. Go down in the C form octave to here. So you have this. These two are unchanged, and this one goes down an octave to here. Now you have this. Now this one will go down an octave in the G form to here. So I need to visualize these two unchanged notes and add the six strings. So this is the same shape as an E chord, but on the next strings up, which down here would be a B chord. So in that one, again, we have these inversions. Then the last set, G chord at the 10th fret with the root in the bass. Top note goes down an octave, E form to here. Visualize these two unchanged notes with this one down an octave. Then you have this, or this, these three notes. Then the top note again here goes down an octave. I'll just use my first finger now. Down an octave to here, C form octave. So the unchanged notes were here, and this one went down an octave to there. So we get this changing to this. That's this, this, and this note. Third, fifth root. Now again, the upper note down an octave is in the G form on these strings and becomes this. The two unchanged notes here, the top note going down an octave to here, giving you this. And now review. First three strings, th first inversion with third in the bass, invert down to root in the bass, invert down to fifth in the bass, invert down to the third in the bass. Then here, seventh fret, with the fifth in the bass, invert down to thirds in the bass, invert down root in the bass, invert down fifth in the bass. At the tenth fret, root in the bass, invert down so the fifth is in the bass, invert down so the third is in the bass, invert down so the root is in the bass. making these arcs. Which can be played in two halves. Making up all of these notes from which that inversion set came. And this one also can be played in two halves. Which make up all of these inversions. And this one, again in two halves, which make up these inversions.